very relevant that we as Christians are put into this world, well, everybody been put into his world. Some are being called and some are denying and, and on and on we can go. But we are called here to do what the Lord wants us to do. So you see, <laughs> for us Christians, rather than allowing the events of these days to drag us down and discourage us, use them as your launching pad to move everyone every day closer to Jesus before it is too late and they are left behind. That's what we have to think about. We're going on Wednesday through the book of Revelation. And as we see that, we see the judgments coming upon the world. We have a little foretaste already. This is nothing compared to what will come yet. And it is up to us that we pour people out of the fire. Let me just use you, the verse here from Jude, the book of Jude, verse, uh, uh, let's see here, 22, yeah, verse 22 and 23. And it says, they be merciful to those who doubt. Snatch others from the fire and save them. To others show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. So be merciful. Pull them out. I'm not saying once they're in hell, you can't pull them out. But before it starts, before they fall into that fire, Lord, pull them out, pull them away from that. Help them to see the importance of having eternal life, of being with Jesus. That's what it's all about. And uh, we talked about uh, calling out. Jesus asked Peter in Matthew chapter 16, verse 15 through 17, it says, <laughs> Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? So how about you? Who do you say that God is? Who do you say that the Lord Jesus is? Well, we see it on the screen here. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Oh, hallelujah. And Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. Now the question comes to you people here. Who do you say that Jesus is? Think about it. Do you really know the Lord Jesus? As we go through the study of Revelation, right at the, the first chapter, there's an explanation that you can't find anywhere else except in that chapter to tell you who Jesus really is. Let me give you some words here. Okay, here's uh, John's physical description of Jesus, but they are also deeply symbolic about Jesus' nature, the glorified, risen, majestic Jesus Christ. When it says there, a flowing robe is shown and a golden band around his chest. What's the symbol of that? It's his role as a high priest of his people. And it goes on, his hair white like wool the symbol of his wisdom, of his eternal nature. And his eyes, like flames, capable of penetrating the deepest part of the soul. Hallelujah. His feet are like brass, symbolizing his power to judge the nations. His voice is like the roar of many waters, symbolizing its power to be heard across the realm of the earth. He's holding seven stars in his right hand. Now, the right hand was a symbol of power and, and safety. The seven stars are the seven angels who were, were sent to guide and protect the churches. And the word comes out of his mouth, represents the sword, I should say, comes out of his mouth, represents the word of God, which he will use to judge humanity. The brightness of his face indicates that his light will illuminate a dark and sinful world. 
So these images reveal Jesus as the Holy One who is coming to judge the works of his church. All believers will stand before him as he evaluates their deeds. So there will be a time coming when this will happen when we stand in front of him. But in the meantime, as we see in Revelation, the seven churches there, there was a thing of warnings. There was a, a, a thing of uh, it did not happen the Lord Jesus, what they were doing. And then it was an encouragement for them of what they should do. And so it's important for us as, as believers to realize that we are at the, close to the end time. There won't be much chance to reach out to others. So I'm happy to see that, that you and people all came forward here. We got prayed for, and I pray with all of my heart that we make it our task to launch out and talk to the people about Jesus. At least plant a seat. If they don't receive it, then, then keep praying for them. But if they receive it, oh, hallelujah, you will be blessed. They will be blessed. It will be a, a joyful thing that goes on. See, in Ephesians chapter 4, it talks about the unbelievers who are sleeping in darkness. And it also goes to the church. You know, we, we can sleep and ignore things. We can just uh, forget about you know, reaching out to others. I have problems of my own. Why should I talk to others? No, that's not what it's all about. It's the thing that, that the life, the light that shines on them. We are the salt and the light, remember? Yeah. And so the Lord Jesus shines through us on them as we present the gospel, the good news. It's not a bad news. It's a good news. While well, you still have a chance. And what, what I found interesting, just I want to use the, this, uh, this passage here in Isaiah 43, verses 10 through 13. Now, this is talked to, you might think, well, this is the Old Testament. That meant to the Jews. No, the New Testament tells us that we, the Jews, the Greeks, the men, the women, all belong to the Lord Jesus. So we are all one in him. And so when we read this, it, this means for us, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he before me no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Savior. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed I am not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, and from ancient days I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reverse it? These are strong words, but it reminds us that we are witnesses. We are witnesses for the Lord, and we should be there to reach out to others. You know, that there is so much misinformation about God for people nowadays. And I, I just came across a story from, from a woman who was riding on a, on a church bus, taking little children home to their parents. And uh, that, that child was about five years old. It was very disruptive very angry, fighting all the time, and using foul language. And she just discerned that he must be living among people who are unbelievers, who don't know the Lord. And so she, she said, I want to show you something. I want to tell you something. I want to, I want to love you. And the little kid jumped back, shocked and fearful, and you know what he says? Let me see if I got it here. If you do that, my mom will have the police arrest you. She says, I love you. Just showing that the Lord loves him. And so <laughs> this poor kid just jumped back and, and 
That's what his mother told him. Now, why? So she pumped him and pumped him and tried to find out what's going on. Well, then he says, well, we, li we live in a trailer. And his mother has lots of men come and have sex with her in front of him. And the mother told him that they were making love. But he was not to let anyone touch him like that until he is an adult. And so the child, because of that, had a complete perverted view of what true love is. And he, re he responded with shock and fear because that's what he was told, a five-year-old child. But that's what's going on in the world. People use that word love, not realizing the true love that Jesus has for each one of us. There are, there are other people who, who had a bad relationship with their father. And so when they hear about the, the father, the God, the father, they don't want anything to do with him. because he, He's going to misuse me, you know. He's, he's going to hurt me and hit me and all these kind of things. And so this is, this is what we put up with. This is what we hear. This is what we see. And this is why we need to reach out to be the witnesses for the Lord. So please, brothers and sisters, let's, let's reach out to them. Let's be the one that, that uh, can bring them the good news. Now, I always believe this, that the best way to get a relationship going, of course, is to tell the people your testimony. Give them your testimony. And I would suggest that you write it down the way you were before you received Christ, and then how you received Christ, and then what he has been doing for you since you received Christ. So these three points, if you put these three downs on paper, memorize them, think about it, because you lived it, and you share that they will not be able to argue against it. Yeah. And then you can bring out, and, and in the between and all that, how much God loves them and all these kind of things. So I want to close with four questions. First of all, what can I do? Hear the good news. What should I do? Hear the good news. What are you telling me, Lord, to do? Share the good news. And now the last one. Are you willing to do it? That's the point. Are you willing to do it? The Lord is reaching out to us, and we should reach out to others. So if you answer these questions truthfully and act on them, his power, his anointing will come upon you and he will help you and guide you and minister to you. He will give you a special anointed appointments with somebody, you know, yeah. who might be ready. But anyhow, just reach out to the ones that, that are close to you. Yeah. And um, I think Hillary suggested it, that we should have like a, at least one Sunday a month with families and friends inviting them and bring them here. Okay? I think that sounds good. So, you know, we make out what Sunday yet and and, uh, and announce that and and bring bring people in. Bring people in. And, and so that, that we can be there to bless them. All right. Now, in closing, I just want to read this doxology from Jude also. Jude, verse 24 through 25. It says there, to him who is able to keep you from falling and to pre present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. All right, Lord, I just release all this to you and to the people that are still here. I ask for your blessing on each one.
that we may have a great day, that we go away rejoicing that you have touched us, and that we be willing to touch others, that we will do what you ask us to do. Are we willing to do, to be your witnesses, Lord? Help us not to forget that question that we ask ourselves and then act on that. For your honor and for your glory, in Jesus' precious name, amen.